A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may, be, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine by the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp with the ten string lyre. Chant his praises. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So first, let me propose that this saying from the gospel of our Lord is actually not a hard one uh, because it seems hard on the, on the surface, right? Jesus saying, I've come to set the world on fire and that I've come to cause division. And then not just division in society, but division within your own family. Now, that seems very difficult, but to me, it isn't. Um, and, and one of the reasons it's not difficult is because... The path to holiness and peace, uh, which isn't an easy one, it does entail some suffering. I mean, think of just the basic uh, philosophical understanding that uh, pain uh, does not equate to evil. You get a flu shot or uh, you exercise, those things are good, uh, or I guess... Well, I don't know. Flu shots, I don't mean that to be political, but, you know, exercising, right? Take that for an, ex for an instance. Or studying, okay? Um, those things are, are good. They're good for your health. They're good for your mind, but they're not easy. You'd rather, instead of exercising, you'd rather sit on the couch and eat chocolate cake. And, and same with, with studying. And yet, uh, the pain leads to something, to our fulfillment, to our well-being. If we do that, in the long run, we're not going to be... Fulfilled if we just sit on the couch and eat chocolate cake. So that is the path to peace and holiness, to union with Christ in our souls, does entail some suffering because we're fallen creatures. You see, we have an inclination to want to be selfish and self-preoccupied, self-absorbed. We, we, we want to blaze our own paths and uh, we want to hoard and we want to control and we want to... Uh, give in to our anxieties and our fears and our frustrations. Think of all the sins that you know you, we we confess. That's what we're inclined to do, and those things are not God, and those things don't lead to our ultimate fulfillment and peace. So to take the path to Jesus Christ, we we have to work. 
Uh, we have to, you know, crane our heads toward the Lord. We have to deny ourselves. We have to deny the temptation to give in to anxiety, to fear, to anger. We have to, we have to refuse the, the inclination to just sit on the couch and, and be selfish and not care about other people. And, and turn instead to the Lord, to open our hearts to him. Now, the beauty of that is once we make that, that act, it's, it's so fulfilling and we won't regret it. The, the thing is, you know, the love of God that gets poured into our souls is better than any chocolate cake or any TV show or any giving into anxiety or fear that, that you could ever imagine. And so uh, that's why, to me, this, this reading is ultimately consoling. That's the division. That's the, the fire that Jesus wants to cause on this earth and within our hearts, the fire that's going to unite us uh, to him and that's going to purify us of all those selfish and evil inclinations that we have. And, and ultimately, it's a fire that is not going to take us down to hell, but a fire that's going to lift us up to heaven. Amen.